Hey everybody, today we're going to be making a creamy beef and shells recipe in the Instant Pot, which is a rendition that I kind of made up from a family favorite um, one pot pasta meal that we make at home. So I've transitioned it into an Instant Pot recipe and I'm going to show you how to make it right now. Hey everybody, welcome to the Four and Fork Kitchen where we are cooking one meal from every country in the world. And today we're sticking a little close to home. We're doing a homegrown recipe that's just really popular in my family that we love to make for dinner. So it's a creamy beef and shells recipe. It has obviously beef and shell noodles and then it has some Parmesan cheese in it, some tomato sauce. I think you're really gonna like it. So to get started, we are going to turn our pressure cooker or our instant pot to the saute function. And we're gonna let that saute function heat up a little bit. I'm gonna add into this pot some olive oil to kind of just coat the bottom. And then I have an onion, uh, one full onion that I've chopped up. And I'm going to saute that onion until it turns translucent. It's very frequently our first step over here. We always gotta saute the onion. Once your onion has started to cook, you're gonna take one pound of beef and put it into the pot and just kind of break it up um, with your spoon. And you're gonna saute the ground beef too until it cooks all the way through. So very frequently I get um, questions on this recipe of if you should drain the grease from the beef. Um, and you can definitely do that if you'd like, but as you can kind of see, there's not really enough grease in here to, to necessarily need to be drained off. So if you'd like to drain it, you can. I don't, I just think it adds some flavor and it's not that much, so. Next step for us is to pour a little bit of this chicken broth into the pot. Um, and we are going to use our spoon to scrape the bottom. While we were cooking the beef, sometimes some of the beef browns and sticks to the bottom of the pot. And in order for us to not get a burn notice, it's really important to just kind of scrape that off of the bottom. Um, anything that's stuck on the bottom of the pot as we turn to a pressure cook function, um, it may burn and give a burn notice, which we don't want. So I'm just gonna use my spoon right now, use some of the liquid that's in here and make sure that we're nice and clean on the bottom so that we don't have any issues. Once the bottom is nice and clean, I'm gonna add in the rest of the chicken broth and all of that is gonna total one and a half cups of chicken broth. In addition to that, I also have one and a half cups of tomato sauce, which is a tiny, tiny bit less than one uh, 15 ounce can. So if you're buying cans of tomato sauce, just buy a 15, 15 ounce can and um, that will be more than enough than what you need. Okay, I combined those a little bit, and now I'm gonna add eight ounces of medium shell pasta, and I'm gonna put them in dry because we are going to cook them right now in the pressure cooker, so you don't have to cook them ahead of time, just add them in dry. And just a little pro tip for you guys, if you're ever making up your own recipe in the Instant Pot or the pressure cooker, um, you're trying something new, you're experimenting a little bit, typically the rule of thumb is for every half pound of pasta or eight ounces of dry pasta, you need three cups of liquid in the pressure cooker. So that's why we have a cup and a half of chicken broth, a cup and a half of tomato sauce, and then a half pound of pasta. So if you're doubling the recipe, make sure that you double everything or else um, you'll end up with a little bit of a mess. I also have one tablespoon of Italian seasoning, salt to taste, maybe about like half a teaspoon or so. I'm gonna mix that up just a tiny, tiny bit just to make sure that the Italian seasoning's in there. I'm not gonna scrape around the bottom of the pot and like really mix up the pasta. I'm just gonna kind of use my spoon to press the pasta down into the liquid. Um, I don't want to mix it up too much because I don't want any of the pasta to touch the bottom and burn or anything. So I'm just going to kind of make sure it's all covered by the liquid. And then I'm going to turn off my saute function. All I need to do is put the lid on this, seal the pressure valve, and then we're going to cook it on high for five minutes. It's gonna take a couple minutes to build pressure. Once it gets to a built pressure, it'll start the timer counting down from five. And once the timer is up and the pasta is done cooking, we're gonna do an instant release, meaning that we're gonna release the pressure immediately and the pasta will be done cooking. If you open up your pressure cooker and the pasta doesn't seem to be cooked all the way, you can always just put the lid back on and cook it for another one to two minutes and that should fix it. All right, we are almost done. So our pasta is finished cooking. We did the instant release. I'm gonna open the lid here. So I want a little bit of a saucier consistency, which is where our cream comes in. So I have one cup of heavy whipping cream, and then I also have 
one cup of powdered Parmesan cheese. Instantly, it looks gourmet, yeah? Definitely, I think so. <laughs> so, the longer that you leave the um, liquid in here with the noodles, the more it's gonna soak it up. So right now, it looks a little bit liquidy, so I would let it sit for maybe like five, 10 minutes or so before serving. It'll stay nice and warm, but the, the noodles will absorb a little bit of that extra liquid. But other than that, you're ready to eat. And in just those couple of minutes, you have an entire one pot pasta meal that will feed your entire family for dinner and it is delicious. So if you want the instructions for how to make this recipe, in the description of the video, I'm gonna put a link to my written instructions that are on my blog. And then if you loved this Instant Pot recipe or you wanna experiment with other recipes from around the world, don't forget to check out the other videos that are on my YouTube channel because I love when you guys make them. Leave me a comment if you do too because I like reading those as well. So thanks so much you guys for hanging out with me this week. I will see you next week, bye. Hey everybody, today on the Four and Fork we are making a crin- Hey everybody, welcome to the- Oh my lord.